Mga usaping in, mga paksang trending, mga talakayang may kabuluhan, lifestyle at kulturang sariling atin. Buhay Pinoy, pag-usapan natin dito sa... Espresso Self! Rona, napaka-special ang episode natin ngayon dahil dito tayo sa isang one-of-a-kind museum dito sa ating bansa. Dito tayo sa Bible Museum. Wow. Dito pa rin sa Philippine Bible Society sa UN Avenue. Alam mo, Gabby, I'm so excited to tour this museum. The last time kasi na nagpunta ako sa museum ay nung nag-tour pa kami sa Ilocos, we went to the Marcos Museum and Mausoleum. Pero ito kasi ibang-iba because it's all about the Bible. Exactly. And syempre, as Christians, we should always be excited to learn more about God's Word. Tama ka dyan, Rona. Napaka-exciting talaga. At para nga itour tayo ngayong um, araw na to dito sa Bible Museum, we have with us Dr. Annie Del Coro, a Bible Translation Consultant from the United Bible Societies and the Philippine Bible Society. Dr. Annie, thank you po and welcome to Lighthouse Cafe. Welcome is, po to Lighthouse Cafe. This is now po the Bible Museum. Dr. Annie, kailan po nag-start itong Bible Museum and what was the inspiration for, you know, putting this up? Well, um, the Bible is... Um, a very important book and uh, we want to read it and uh, it's very helpful if we we all all of us Christians will read it yes. mm -hmm. but uh, the Bible Museum was set up so that knowing more about God will be easier mm -hmm. we want to put the, the Bible in sights and sounds mm -hmm. so that people can understand internalize the content without being too difficult mm -hmm. And I think it started in mga November 2010, papo. Yes. And it has been running for almost six years now. Yes. And you mentioned the keywords in sights and sounds, yes. para may ma ipaliwanag nga sa mga tao kung saan nagsimula yung Bible. Yeah, those okay. are the highlights, the mm -hmm. sights and sounds to share about the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yes. And mamaya nga po, matitingnan ma ma natin yeah. mamaya ron na lahat ng sinasabi ni Dr. Mm -hmm. Abby. Earlier in the introduction po, it was mentioned that you are a Bible translation consultant. Ano po? Ano po ba yung Bible translation consultant? What do you do exactly po? Well, um, of course, the minister of the Bible Society is to, one of the ministries is to translate the Word of God. But it's a very difficult thing to do mm -hmm. because we want to make sure that it is faithful to the original text that is Hebrew and Greek. And so the Bible, the trans, Bible translation consultant is uh, a person who is qualified only mm -hmm. if this person has a PhD mm -hmm. either in biblical studies or linguistics. Mm -hmm. And wow. then this person, if the PhD is in biblical studies, this person has to study again uh, linguistics mm -hmm. and vice versa. If the PhD is in linguistics, this person has to study biblical so studies. So both fields pala both that. Fields. And you were trained in those both fields. We and have to do that. So if the PhD is in, for example, in my case, linguistics, I took a course and I went to um, a seminary in the U.S. Mm -hmm. to study Hebrew and Greek. And you've been doing this for how long na po? 25 years. Wow, 25, 25 years. years and still so much passion in mm. what she does. Siguro mag-start na tayo sa tour natin. Oh, 4,000 na years to eh. <laughs> okay, let's go. Napainitin natin, ma'am. Alright, let's go. Yeah. Yan. Well, ang uh, Bible Society, uh, madalas tinatanong kami kung paanong nagkaroon tayo ng Biblia. Mm -hmm. So, how the Bible came to us and, uh, and that is the reason why the very first exhibit centered on that. So this is, uh, this uh, exhibit is about how the Bible came to mm -hmm. us. And so it starts with the call of uh, God to Abraham, 20th century BC. And uh, this is where uh, uh, God calls Abraham. And, uh, and from that on, from that time on, the relationship started. And okay. uh, from there, we continue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, ikutin natin, Gabi, no? And then, this, obviously, this one is uh, for, with Moses. Right. Yes. Papa. So, from the call of Abraham uh, by God, so, he called them his people. And so, uh, he started this relationship. And when you have a relationship, you have to have a way how to deal with the people. Mm -hmm. And so, it was necessary for God to give them the Ten Commandments. Mm. So this is now in the 13th century where God reveals the Ten Commandments to Moses. Okay. And so this is found in Exodus 20, of course, the very famous chapter uh, that gives the uh, Ten, Ten Commandments. Mm. 
Dr. Annie, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, you mentioned that you uh, start your relationship uh, with Abraham. Yes. And then obviously with uh, the Ten Commandments with Moses. When did you start your actual writing? Oh, uh -huh. okay. The actual writing is very hard to give a specific date. Mm -hmm. But after the relationship was established, mm -hmm. then the Lord assigned, not assigned, but he inspired different people mm. to write down the kind of relationship that they have with God. Mm. And that is where we have, we go to the next part, the writing, the biblical okay. writing begins. Okay. So, as I've said, God inspired different people to put down into writing the kind of relationship that they had. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so this will include the historical events, mm -hmm and then the personal struggles mm -hmm. and then the the, uh, the stories you know that's why we have different types of material in the bible mm -hmm. we have historical mm -hmm. we have uh, poetry you know people the writers expressing their feelings in their mm -hmm. relationship with god mm -hmm. you were talking about the content po of the yes. bible no what about the materials being used during this time well uh, they had to resort to different means mm -hmm. and uh, of course there are there there is uh, um, there is uh, we have uh, historical facts to show that they made use of stones, mm -hmm. stones. and they made use of uh, of anything that will last mm -hmm. and later on we will go to the the invention of the writing material co called papyrus okay. and they resorted to the use of uh, anything that will help them write mm -hmm. but uh, and then you and then from papyrus they went on to use the leather the skin mm -hmm. of animals, animals. yes right. okay. that was the development mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. follow up dr annie so who, who were these people na nagsulat well what, syempre mm -hmm. hindi natin alam personally no mm -hmm. Pero sabi ko nga, uh, the Lord inspired different people. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is one field in biblical studies, and this is called uh, textual criticism, mm -hmm. wherein that is what they focus on. Mm -hmm. uh, how the writing started and uh, making sure that what was written down, is uh, re it reflects the ancient writings. Mm -hmm. okay. So okay. that is in textual criticism. Okay. All right. Let's proceed yes. to the different stage. Okay. So now we go. You see there is a big uh, jump from the 10th century BC. Now we are already in the 3rd mm -hmm. to the 2nd century BC. And this is already talking about the first translation of the Hebrew Bible. Okay. You see, why is there a big gap? Because this is the time that the uh, Israel was conquered by different conquerors, okay? Because of the disobedience of right. the Israelites. Mm. And so we had the first conquerors were the Assyrians, followed by the Babylonians, and then we had the Persians, mm -hmm. and then the Ro uh, Greek or Ro Greco Romans. Okay, so uh, because of that, uh, there is a. Uh, uh, the, the, the Israelites experienced so much suffering and uh, we know uh, in our Bible that it came to a point that they also returned to God mm -hmm. in that their relationship with God but uh, they had to go through this mm -hmm. and uh, they wanted now it came to a point that they wanted to have a record of the Hebrew Bible but uh, uh, the Hebrew Bible the Israelites did not speak Hebrew anymore during the time of uh, the uh, second century, even during the time of Jesus. They were speaking Greek mm -hmm. because of, uh, of uh, all the different conquerors. Uh, so now they were under the Greco-Romans, they were under the Roman Empire. And that is why our New Testament is written in Greek. Mm -hmm. And uh, But they want a translation of the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible and so this is the first translation of the Hebrew Bible and we call it the Septuagint okay. Septuagint yeah, yeah. The, the word is over there okay. Septuagint it mm -hmm. is the first translation of the Hebrew Bible mm -hmm. into Greek so okay. two quick facts that you said Dr. Annie Ron, one is we started uh, obviously the Hebrew 
And this is the first account of the translation. Yes, yeah. this is the very first translation of the Word of mm. God. Any, from Hebrew to Greek. Any insights for or details kaya on how the translation uh, went about? Or, oh, there are uh, many stories, many you know. Stories. There are many stories. Uh, it is said that, uh, and, uh, and this happened in Alexandria, mm -hmm. in Egypt. Because by this time, the Israelites were already outside Palestine. And uh, so they were, uh, the story goes that there was this uh, uh, king, who wanted to have, who was building a library. Mm -hmm. And he knew about the Hebrew people. And he wanted to have a record of their, of their uh, collection of writings. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so he made sure that he had a copy of the Hebrew Bible and had someone translate yeah. it into Greek. Okay. So that is the first translation of the Hebrew Bible. Yep. So next, yeah. next All stage right. Pataya. Okay, so now we have already the uh, the Word of God mm -hmm. in Greek, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, this is uh, a point in our history of the of the Word of God wherein I, all, I like to describe it as the, uh, you know, the intersection of the natural with the supernatural because we have here the birth of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. okay? And so our, the passage that I like to use is uh, Hebrew, Hebrews 1, 1 to 3. So this is where, uh, very nicely put, in the past God spoke to our ancestors mm -hmm. many times and in many ways through the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us through His Son. So here, this is the point in history where God may, is, is, comes to us in the form of a man and he is the word incarnate right. that is jesus mm. christ and so this is uh, so from from the call of god to abraham and then the the uh, continuing history of the people now we have jesus christ coming into the picture mm. Mm. dr any question curious din ako eh. yes. and also i'm sure you my viewers natin. yes um yung preservation um, uh, technique that was, uh, you know, applied during that time. Because well, obviously we're talking of uh, years and years of... Uh, I know, I know. Oh. That is why, as I've said, there is one particular study in biblical studies called textual criticism. Mm -hmm. All they do is to evaluate manuscripts because uh, it was written in manuscripts, either papyrus or in animal skin. Now, all the uh, scholars have to evaluate and compare to find which is the most reliable. Mm. And they have set up criteria, principles, uh, how to compare and evaluate manuscripts. Okay. okay. Yes, yes. Ito, let's proceed naman to a very famous uh, man from the Bible. At talagang ito ay aking, alam mo, tinitingala. At mm. ginagawa natin example, si Apostle Paul Apostle and his Paul. writings. Yep. Yes. And Gabby, Dr. Annie, alam naman natin how important the writings of the Apostle Paul or lalo na sa ating mga Christians because yun ang nagiging basis natin for our practices and doctrines as New Testament churches. So, andito po tayo ngayon ano, mm -hmm. sa part na ng exhibit. If you can uh, tell us more about this book. Yes, this is the module wherein we say Paul writes to the Christians and this is in the first century AD. And uh, Paul was uh, the most prolific writer yes. mm -hmm. in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the reason why we decided that there should be one module mm -hmm. that focuses on Paul. And so uh, he wrote uh, letters. Right. Of course, at that time he did not know. We did not. Nobody knew that it, they would become parts of the New Testament. But he was very prolific. And so, and his and his letters were transported from one place to another, mm -hmm. to, so that all the churches, mo, the churches that he founded, especially, will have a copy. Mm -hmm. So, how does Paul look? Nobody knows. Okay, mm -hmm. nobody knows. And the New Testament does not give a description. So, when we were discussing how will he would look, uh, it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. So, but we chose someone. Uh, uh, well, we chose, probably we were influenced by our Paul comics. We have mm -hmm. Bible comics that we produce and we uh, want a very intelligent looking, so receding hairline and, yeah. mm -hmm. so, and uh, of course, with writing, with writing. Oh, and yeah. uh, 
and so this is and there and our museum guests they like their pictures taken mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, with this uh, with mm. Paul here. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I, I think and I think Rona more than the, the look naman of uh, Apostle Paul. It's the the letters, the, yeah. the epistles, um, his his contribution to um, the the church that right. lasts uh, up until now and yes. captured niya sa Bible. Oh, oh. Yep. Pero okay po yung picture. Oh, okay naman. <laughs> sa picture tayo mayroon. Oh, oh, sige. <laughs> Proceed tayo dito. Yep, tinya check po natin iba, Dr. Annie. All right. The Gospels and other New Testament writings. Ah, okay. So okay. after the mga letter epistles of Paul, nandito na po tayo sa Gospels. Oh yeah, Paul Matthew, was Mark, uh, yep. Paul was the uh, first to write. Okay. Uh, before the Gospels, well, the, the, the this the stories about the life of Christ in the Gospels, they were part of oral history. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, the the writers of the Gospels did not write as early as Paul mm -hmm. did. And so, because Paul probably also because he was a scholar, and he wanted his letters to be uh, copies of his letters to be given to the churches. And uh, anyway, this is a very important part of the history, mm -hmm. wherein uh, the gospels are written down. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, the tradition ha tradition has it that the oldest one is, or the first one to be written was Mark. Mark and then followed by the other gospels okay so now we have the the life of christ right and this is the uh, uh, very important part a very important part of the new testament mm. so right. these are the gospels okay yeah. dr annie dr annie she didn't to natalie well ang, uh, ang museum kasi we want to have artifacts also uh, objects that are mentioned in the Bible mm -hmm. and so we have different things here mm -hmm. and here this is one of the latest uh, 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 addition to the collection this is a uh, prayer shawl mm -hmm. this is shawl. a prayer shawl so may manikin kami para ipakita ang prayer shawl of the Israelites or the even until now the Jews they use it so the prayer shawl they wear it when they pray or when they go to the synagogue mm -hmm. Uh, when they went to the synagogue in the past, no? At yung kippa, uh, that is a, uh, that they use that even until now. Uh, the, Jewish, no? the Just to show that they are Jews, mm -hmm. it is an expression of their, somehow their uh, religiosity, and uh, they want to show that they are practicing Jews. Okay. Mm, but this is a prayer show. Okay. So it's called Talit, tama pa ba? Yes. How do you pronounce it? Talit. Yes, that's correct. Talit kippa. <laughs> Kipa. kipa, yes. That's a kipa. May nabibili po ba dito yan? <laughs> As of, uh, na order yan. Na order. Na okay. order. Okay. Hindi ko alam kung may nabibili nga dito. Okay, so siguro we can proceed? Yeah. All right. Okay. This is where you have someone reading it and uh, other people writing, writing it. Writing it, wow. It, yes. Parang dictation. So, oh, so one copy oh. po, isang, isang tao, oh, oh. Ano, handwritten. Mm, yeah, kasi wala oh. pa siyempre yung mga copying machines. Mm. And Galing. so oh. this was how they did it. And, uh, and but uh, also because of this method, there were some errors that they found out. You know how difficult it is to somebody just to read and the others take down notes. Sometimes Apa. they don't hear it mm -hmm. uh, exactly the way it was said. But this is an escritorium and to show us that now you have the spread of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Dr. Anish, usually, how long is it boom boom yung isang ano? Mahaba oh, kasi ah. yung mga, mga. Uh, at saka ma makikita natin mamaya dyan may mga scrolls at pa yung parchment dito mm -hmm. papasok na dito yung parang uh, pages na. Okay. okay, so maybe here you still have the scrolls. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Although our drawing, they are not scrolls. They are maybe parchments mm -hmm. here. Pero ito scroll ang gamit niya yes. dito. Yes, sila naka-parchment oh, na oh, yung mga nagtitigdan. Hmm. And then yung the follow-up kay Ryan, mm -hmm. you mentioned po na may prone to error or yes, may chance na mag-error. Yes. So how exactly do we um, ensure or did they ensure na okay. you know, again, maayos yung okay. pag- Very good ito? question. Well, of course, uh, again, in the uh, in biblical studies, uh, textual criticism again is it focuses on the uh, the way the manuscripts are produced and so that they can identify which are good ones and which are not very reliable mm. so talagang uh, ang gusto kasi natin yung talagang faithful lang mm -hmm. so the, the the field has developed into such that 
they have developed the uh, principles and the criteria. So, uh, makikita natin, napapolish yung process mm -mm. so that they can make sure that we have a very reliable manuscript. Okay. Okay. This is the stage we're in. Uh, the scroll okay, was converted already, was converted into pages. Mm. That is why you call that a codex. Okay. codex. Uh, the codex, it means that it is the edition of the Bible that has pages right. because it's easy to turn the page. Mm -hmm. so, that, so we have the terms, the codices, that is the plural form, mm -hmm. but the singular form is codex because it, it is in a book form. Mm -hmm. So it was a very significant uh, part of our history, yeah. yes. So 200 AD. Yes. Okay. We yes. started but, to have mm -hmm. the codex. Proceed po tayo sa next, Dr. Mm -hmm. Henry. Right. Dito naman po tayo sa accepted books of the New Testament. Yes. Bakit po sinabi accepted books? Okay. Well, uh, there were many books that were, religious books that were written. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, not all of them became part right. of the New Testament. And uh, so, uh, one very important uh, uh, and a very difficult uh, work of uh, the church and Bible scholars is to decide which one are supposed to be the inspired word of God, okay? So, uh, so here you have to look at the very long history and then the interaction between Christians, the Christian community and the church. And so this was in uh, 367 AD when a bishop of the church, St. Athanasius, compiles a list of books identical to the books of the New Testament. So it is at this stage that uh, the church decided, and we have accepted this as the, uh, as the books of the New Testament. New Testament. Okay, so, and then uh, those are the criteria, criteria. Okay. that were used. Mm -hmm. Apostolicity, uh, wide, wide usage. usage, and orthodoxy. Mm -hmm. So uh, people can come to the Bible Museum to, to get more detail about mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. So you will see uh, not it, it is already in the 4th century when uh, we have decided on the books of the New Testament. Mm. So 27 books of the New Testament. 27 books okay. of the New Testament. Let's go to the next one. Okay, I'll just go. Yes. So uh, the Latin Vulgate. Uh, the Latin Vulgate is the Latin translation of the Bible. And uh, we think that it's a very important part of the history because it became the translation of the Bible uh, that the church used for 1,000 years, okay? During the Roman Empire and continuing on from there. And so we have uh, Pope Damasus uh, commissioning uh, uh, Jerome, a very important figure, uh, a very uh, good uh, biblical scholar, and Jerome translated the Bible from the original Hebrew and Greek into Latin. Latin. And this became mm. part of uh, the translation of the Bible for at least 1,000 years. Mm. Latin okay. translation. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the next, next one. Yes. Now, this is uh, the module to talk about the Masoretic text. So, you see the Bible, mm. uh, the Bible written in Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew language used only consonants. See, uh, Hebrew is like that, wherein mm. you use only consonants. Okay. But uh, the, the Masoretes, they are the scholars. Okay, you have here a uh, definition of what a Masoret was. Mm. They were the scholars who made sure that the Hebrew words were read correctly. Ah, and so okay. they had to develop a set of vowel po pointings here. Mm -hmm. These are the vowel pointings. You saw, so see? the difference no with vowels yes. and with vowel no pointings. No vowel pointings. Here you have the vowel yeah. pointings. So that you know how to read it. And uh, because in their case, uh, based on context, they can already tell. When you, they see the cons consonants, they can tell what the word is. Mm -hmm. But uh, they were, the Masoretes were thinking of uh, the generations to come mm. after will they still read it correctly mm. and so they develop the uh, vowel pointing so this okay. is an example of Psalm 23 why is it important in the development of the Bible well if you don't have the vowel pointings you would not know how to read the Hebrew yeah. words correctly mm. Mm. and very difficult because they did not want to 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 uh, 
uh, they put the vowel pointings only on top, inside, or below mm. the consonant. They did not want to interfere Without because uh, because uh, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to change uh, mm. the the uh, the order of the consonants. I could imagine how tedious oh, the process was. Very very tedious. But very, very important po. Na, but very uh, important. Yeah. Otherwise, our Hebrew words mm. will be difficult to read. Mm. But Hebrew, even until now, modern Hebrew, they only have uh, consonants. consonants. They don't have vowels. Okay. But in the in the uh, Old Testament, we now have the pointings. Okay, good. Ito. The, na, eh, oh. Meron na tayong printing the machines The Bible is printed. Na to. Yes. So this from, is, kailan ba yun? 10th century to 15th century? Yes. Ganun po katagal. Yes. 500 years. I know. Oh. Because, uh, you know, it came to a point that people want to reproduce. Mm -hmm. To reproduce. And so this will be through printing. And uh, the movable type was uh, invented by Gothenburg. And in the... And then in 1456, produces the first printed Latin Bible based mm. on the Vulgate. Mm. So what does this mean? It mm. means that the Bible can be reproduced. Mass production. Mass, mm. mass production. Mm. Although at that point, you know, very expensive. Mm. It was very expensive to print a Bible. Mm. Nevertheless, it was not by writing anymore. Mm -hmm. You can print it. Uh -oh. But now you can appreciate, no, kasi tayo very accessible na sa atin, oh. ang printed Bible. Okay. So you will see how very blessed we are yep. in this age. Okay. So this is the printing of the critical text. Now, what is the critical text? Yes. The critical text is the Word of God in the original language. Yeah, for, so here you have Greek here, and mm -hmm. then you have Hebrew. But it's called the critical text because it has all the information you need to make a good translation and it will also give the history uh, some history of uh, this is for every word not not all the time but it will it will tell you uh, who's who uh, the ancient fathers you see the fathers will uh, will also be mentioned when they have a when they have comments uh, for every for a particular word mm. so that's why it's called a critical mm -hmm. text because it's not just an ordinary bible it has it includes uh, uh, my notes notes, uh, notes po, my very and why, why notes. is this critical text um, important po? it's important oh. for the biblical scholars mm -hmm. for bible translators, translators also. Okay. Uh, for example when we when we have uh, words that have uh, variants Mm. Uh, for example, why is it that uh, a particular word is uh, translated in a different way? Mm. So the information will be given in the footnotes and the critical text. So this is a special edition of the Word of God in the original languages with the added information okay. for translators. Okay. At nagtatapos yung mm -hmm. ating tour dito sa History, history of, of the, the Bible. Bible. Well, actually, this is a very important Ay, part. Ay, part pa pala to. Oh, oh. Interesting. Uh, sorry. 20th na century na tayo, Dr. Annie, pero uh, uh, parang papasok tayo sa isang cave. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. Takot oh. ako sa cave. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, um, they, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, hmm. they were discovered in 1947. 1947. Mm. 1947. Okay. So you see, this is uh, uh, the long history It was uh, uh, that I gave you. It, it gives a very systematic development mm. of how the Word of God, uh, the different stages it went through. Mm. And, uh, but in 1947, uh, they discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls. For the benefit of our viewers, Dr. Anya, what are the Dead Sea Scrolls? Okay. What are the So, the Dead Sea Scrolls, eh di, nasa tabi yan ng Dead Sea. Mm. It's a cave. Okay? Here, it's a cave. It's that they are called the Qumran Cave. Yan. Okay. So Bund Qumran. Bunduk yan, mm. ayun, dyan ng caves. No? Mm. They are called Qumran Caves. The Qumran Caves, they are the... Uh, so, the story goes that the... Uh, the Bedouins. Uh, may tinapon, maraming kwento eh, may tinapon daw na uh, 
bato mm. narinig nila parang ibang tunog mm. so they went in and they found jars okay and they found jars with manuscripts manuscripts mm. wow. because uh, that uh, cave you know it is the community of essenes the essenes are the very ascetic very conservative Christians during that time okay. because they were the Christians at that time were being persecuted, persecuted yeah. by the Romans mm. no and so they formed their community by the uh, dead uh, by the dead sea yun ngang mga Qumran caves na iyan mm -hmm. and anyway so uh, why are the dead sea scrolls uh, significant yes. mm -hmm. well because they go back to the first century mm -hmm. so sinulat sila first century mm -hmm. ang ating old testament ngayon base sa ating uh, uh, masoretic text uh, 10th century na yan. 10th century. So, yeah. older pa ito. Oh, wow. So, when they were discovered in 1947, uh, the people uh, asked themselves, of course, will it be consistent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Will it be the same? Mm -hmm. Will it be different? Mm -hmm. And that is how you will test the reliability of our old manuscripts. Mm -hmm. And ano naging findings oh, po nito? very good question. Kasi nga, we are very happy to say mm. that they have done, scholars have done their analysis mm -hmm. of the Dead Sea Scrolls and there is no major deviation. Wow, amazing. No major deviation from the, the manuscripts that uh, uh, we use for our Bibles. Ang, uh, ang tawag kasi dyan sa Old Testament, Codex Leningradensis, mm -hmm. 10th century. Pero nung nadiscovery ang Dead Sea Scrolls, First century, mm -hmm. no major deviation. Wow. So we thank the Lord okay. for that. Yeah. And that's God's blessing. Yep. And so this is like a, uh, uh, you know, for people to experience mm -hmm. the cave. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have, uh, we can go in okay. here. If you Ready like. ka na ba, Gabby? Dr. Annie, and daming Bibles. <laughs> right. Well, we want to see the, we want to show the complete uh, mm. picture. Mm -hmm. So, we have already given you the development of mm. the, the Word of God mm. and how it was translated. And uh, finally, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, they will complete the picture. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, because of... Uh, the reliability right. okay we want to emphasize that mm. but here so that is the complete story of the of uh, how the word of god came about mm -hmm. and now this is the modern era wherein we have different publications mm. so we want to show you the different publications uh, the word of god mm. printed in different actually these are different languages mm -hmm. and uh, we have the very old translations uh, in Philippine languages, mm -hmm. they are also here. Mm -hmm. Mga ilang languages na po ba? Mm -hmm. Ay, marami na. Mm -hmm. Ang marami na ang mga, uh, kung mga complete Bible, uh, siguro mga 400 to 500. Wow. Complete Bible yun. No? Uh, uh, New Testament, po, 2,000 na yan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, worldwide po. Worldwide, uh, that uh, is worldwide. Wow. If you just talk about the New Testament, uh, you have already around 2,000 languages. Mm -hmm. but, so, Philippine dialects mm -hmm. po, mga ilan na po? Uh, Phil well, uh, Philippine languages, we have, uh, under the Philippine Bible Society, we have, of course, the eight major languages, and we have at, uh, some uh, five uh, minor languages. Mm -hmm. So, we have uh, less than 20, mm -hmm. but we have other institutions mm -hmm. that are specializing on minor languages, mm -hmm. like the Summer Institute of Linguistics. Mm -hmm. uh, they have translated the Word of God, the New Testament, into around uh, 40. Mm -hmm. so 40 to 50. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh kasi masyadong mal malaki yung trabaho. And, and you so, process po, how long would it take? Usually, one one language or one dialect. Well, I I mentioned to you that mm. uh, the first uh, Tagalog translation, meaning-based translation, uh, it took the team uh, ten years. Wow. Okay, okay. ten okay. years. Mm. And uh, but uh, first translation is different from a revision mm. mm -hmm. because. Uh, like the Tagalog Bible, it has been revised mm. many times. So, mm. a revision will take a little bit shorter. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then, siguro, important din po, i-point out, Dr. Annie, yung criteria 
just to make sure that we're faithful to the oh, original. Oh, very important. The, yeah. That is our number mm -hmm. one, the most important criterion mm -hmm. is faithfulness to the original text. Mm -hmm. But then we want to make sure also that people understand it. Mm -hmm. uh, faithful nga, kung di mo naman maintindihan. Mm -hmm. it, it's not useful. Mm -hmm. So it has to be understood. And when you say understood, you already have to consider different audiences. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to consider different audiences, those who like a uh, literal or a uh, uh, formal translation, mm -hmm. or those who would like a meaning-based translation. So that mm -hmm. is going into different approaches mm -hmm. in Bible translation. Gabi, hulaan mo nga kung kaninong damit ang suot ko ngayon. Napakademir mo naman, ikaw ay isang <laughs> nagmahal, nasaktan at nagtagumpay. So ikaw si Ruth. Wow, at talagang favorite ni Ruth ang pink. Yes. <laughs> and obviously, ikaw si Joseph because yes. of your multicolored coat. And Doc Annie, tell us more about this place. I'm sure mm. the kids would love to be here where they can dress up like Bible characters. Yes, that is the goal mm. of uh, have establishing this uh, uh, area mm. for them to have fun. Mm. And uh, there are other things at the back, the sense in the Bible, mm. and then, but especially this. Uh, costumes that they can wear and then they have their pictures taken. That's nice. Kayo rin po ba nagko-costume din kayo? There was a time that the oh, uh, ginawa ko na din 'yan. Ayan, meron pa sila mga headdresses. Ito si Queen Esther na costume, no? Tsaka oh, si Moses. Mm -hmm. okay. And meron din silang mga ano, parang tarpaulin po ba 'yan? Mm -hmm. Mga mm -hmm. places na Pero napakaganda nito, Rona, kasi it adds color and yeah. fun to the whole tour. Oh, okay. So hindi siya educational lang all throughout, mm -hmm. but you can also enjoy, you know. Tsaka for all ages talaga mm -hmm. yung Bible Tsaka music. memories, oh, yes. diba? you experience uh, the Bible characters. Mm -hmm. Well, napakaganda po, Dr. Annie. Mm -mm. Gabby, this has been a day full of fun yes, and learnings. Maraming salamat po, Dr. Annie, for having us here in the Bible Museum. Napakaganda po rito at talagang marami kami natutunan ni Gabby about the Bible. And sana nga po mas marami pang mga kababayan natin ang makapunta at makabisita rito. Would you like to invite our viewers? Oh yes, I would love to do that. Uh, so mga kaibigan, iniimbita ko po namin kayo dito sa Philippine Bible Society, visit our Bible Museum. Uh, because we want you to know more about the Word of God, but in an enjoyable way. Mm. So, please come. For, for comments or questions po, may contact number po ba? Well, or? they can write us at the, or email us okay. at the Bible, I, Bible Society. 